No matter how seasoned a chef you are, there are always new ingredients and recipes to get fired up about. Delicious spice rubbed New York strip served with sauteed potatoes and the most amazing mushroom. Incredible steak. Bit of a chef's dream because it's one of the most succulent, one of the most tasteful, and more importantly, one of the most difficult to cook. First off, the next dish I'm going to cook is a very simple dish. Very quick and very delicious, filled with flavour. This is a perfect dish to do on the barbecue. It's steak, grilled in the pan with wild mushrooms, and we make a paste, a seasoning paste, with powdered morels or with porcini, whatever you can find. The spice rub. The rub is sweet, it's bitter, it's smoky, it's spicy. It's made with coffee, chipotle. And the secret behind this rub is just pressing it into the steak. I cannot stress how important it is to let those steaks sit out in the kitchen for at least 10 minutes before you cook them. If it's ice cold and so frigid, there's no flavour in that steak whatsoever. To make the wild mushroom paste, very simple. One beef stock cube, a little oil, take some powdered wild mushroom. We make our seasoning paste. It would be pointless to use fresh mushrooms in the paste because they would lack flavour. Dried mushrooms, the intensity of them, and flavour is enormous. From there, hot pan. We're going to sear it, baste it with garlic, rosemary and thyme, and then take it out and let it rest. I'm a firm believer in cooking it quickly and letting it rest long. Get that pan nice and hot, touch of oil in, because I want to sear this steak and make it sort of caramelised and literally toast all those spices inside that New York strip. And what we do massage our seasoning paste with the wild mushrooms into the meat. So it's filled with flavour. Paste side down. Then massage the paste into the side that's facing, which hasn't yet been seasoned. Grilling steaks on a griddle pan has to be one of the very best ways of cooking a steak. It's very tender. It's not so aggressive as a pan. As you start to see that first little flicker of smoke, steak up and into the pan she goes. Time, rosemary in, in with the garlic. I want all that seasoning in there as well. If we get this right, it's cooked within three and a half to four minutes. Now, our mushrooms. Very simple. Today I'm using oyster mushrooms. A little bit of oil. Massage the oil in. Quick sear, lift. And look at that. Flip it over. And then in comes the butter. Beautiful. Turn the gas off, tilt the pan, and baste. And this is the secret behind cooking this steak at room temperature. It makes a huge difference. From there, literally out, and let that rest. As it rests, spoon on that flavoursome butter. Let that sit there to rest. Onto the grill pan they go. So now we have the steak and the mushrooms cooking together. The secret of grilling with the griddle pan is make sure your pan is really hot. Now, portobello mushrooms goes brilliantly well with the steak and king oysters. How do we slice them? Down, and then literally turn that around and slice. When they're this small, find a flat surface on the mushroom, and then down. The thinner you slice them, the more flavor. The portobello mushrooms, the big ones, slice in half, turn it around, and slice it down. Let the knife do the work. If it's not hot, you increase the chances of whatever you place onto it sticking. You should treat a griddle pan exactly the same way you barbecue something. Turn our mushrooms. So as you can see now, I've turned the gas off the mushrooms and off the steak. So then it will now continue to cook in the heat which is with it. Olive oil in first. Mushrooms go in. Try and keep them nice and flat across the circumference of the cast iron. Each mushroom, 30% of it is water. So you need a hot pan to saute the mushroom. There's a big difference in taste between a boiled mushroom and a sautéed mushroom. We're going to add shallots and garlic only once the mushrooms have been sautéed. Mushrooms take a lot longer to cook. That noise is the water evaporating out of the mushroom. Hot pan, high heat, and get rid of that water in the pan. By cooking mushrooms, it intensifies the flavour because it takes out the water content within the mushroom. And that's what gives those mushrooms that really strong flavour. So think of a mushroom which has been dried, it's even more intensified. And the flavour left in here is incredible. Gas down, shallots I'm going to sprinkle over there, get a garlic over. And then these little babies, they're little thyme flowers. That's going to lift the mushrooms and make them so fragrant. Sprinkle the thyme flowers over, make a little well in the centre first, touch of butter in, 
Now, give that pan a great shake. When you make your seasoning paste with beef stock cheese, what it does is it gives the beef that real beefy flavour. Because unfortunately, a lot of the beef we buy today isn't hung sufficiently. It's quite tasteless. So therefore, what you are doing is putting the flavour back into the beef. It's a very clever trick, turning the gas off and allowing your meat to continue to cook but rest at the same time. So it's nice and hot. Mushrooms out. Wow. That is beautiful. Now for the exciting part. The bit that chefs love, plating. If you cook it all the way through and then rest it, the problem with that is it's continuing to cook. It's also starting to go cold. So I do everything within the pan. So you can start to see the blood starting to pierce the surface. So I know that is medium rare. Look at the shape of the fingerlings. Try and place the fingerlings literally almost bedding into each other. So get the little bends. Your mushrooms underneath your potatoes. Let them sort of cascade onto the plate. From there, one of America's favorite sauces, a smoked barbecue sauce. That's gonna go on the bottom and literally sit at the base of those mushrooms. Arrange your mushrooms on the platter so when we sit the beef on, the mushrooms now start to absorb the juices of the beef. So there's our steak with mushrooms. Tiny bit of olive oil and a little bit of parsley to finish. Parsley, mushrooms, parsley steak work deliciously well together. Dried mushrooms, in my opinion, should be in everybody's kitchen cupboard. Don't slice the steak too thin. You slice it too thinly, it dries out. Lift that up, keep the steak intact, sit it on top of that sauce. Open that up, just see how pink that is. And then finally, take those resting juices that were left on your tray. That is amazing flavor. And then just glaze all the way over. And there you have the most amazing spice rub. New York strip with sooty fingerlings and stunning mushrooms. Mmm.